how appreciative we are that a company of your renowned strength has taken it upon itself to interest itself in the development of Ghana. It's a very um, auspicious day for us to have such an important company getting involved in Ghana and, and, and wanting to establish a base here for doing business. Uh, we are trying to recover from the uh, poor management of our economy over the last few years, which saw our country go into a decline in, in the key areas of economic activity, in our industry, in our agriculture, and uh, bringing about a lot of difficulties for the population in terms of employment and the cost of living. So the effort that is being made on our part is now is to try to put a better framework in place to encourage especially the business. We see the future of Ghana as a country which has hopefully a strong private sector-led economy. And that's the way the thinking of those of us who are now in government to create the environment that would allow business people and enterprises to thrive in Ghana. We've done some, taken some measures at the, at the fiscal end, taken some measures in terms of monetary policy. And now, we're now focusing on the very key area of power and energy. If we're going to succeed in driving the industrial development of our country rapidly, so that gas, uh, crude oil, supplies to our country uh, are now matters of very great moment for us. <clears throat> so right at the beginning of this effort of reconstruction, we've come across you, or you have come across us, or we've come across each other. But whichever it is, it is something that has been very, is very welcome on our part. And um, we think that you are going to play a very important role in the economic life of Ghana one that is going to be, better, what I can see, going to be very positive. All the people who are here, who are your interlocutors, from the minister through to the ministers, through to those who are running the, end, the important energy institutions of our country, are very enthusiastic about the relationship that is being formed with you. And uh, I want to assure you that on their part, where they're going to do, all of us are going to do uh, whatever we need to do to make sure that this relationship that we have now begun to build becomes a strong, positive, and successful one. So let me welcome you once again very warmly here. And um... uh, your uh, precious diary. This is a very big uh, day for us as Gazprom. As uh, indeed we have signed today uh, the second biggest uh, LNG supply contract in our portfolio. Uh, I have to thank uh, Honorable Minister for his support and, uh, of course, thank uh, GNPC team for hard work because it was uh, indeed hard, intense work which uh, brought us to the uh, fantastic result. Uh, I have to uh, also echo uh, what uh, Mr. Mir Minister said. Gazprom indeed is the biggest uh, gas company in the world. We have produced nearly 11% of uh, uh, global gas production last year. Uh, we have uh, more than 10 years uh, history in LNG business. And we are more than honored uh, to become a supplier of LNG uh, to Ghana. This is a very big, huge, important contract for both sides, for Ghana, but also for Gazprom. And we are absolutely sure we will become a reliable partner for uh, your energy industry. A uh, few words about myself. Uh, I am uh, the head of department of uh, international business of Gazprom, uh, which is now located in St. Petersburg in Russia. On my uh, right hand uh, side, uh, we have our ambassador. And also uh, Gazprom Marketing and Trading, who is uh, basically the winner of uh, today's ceremony because they have uh, led the negotiations and they will become the counterpart uh, supplying LNG with uh, the CEO, 
uh, Mr. Vasiliev, uh, and uh, the rest of the team who have led the negotiations. I also, uh, I'm, I'm honored to pass to you best regards of our CEO, Mr. Miller. Unfortunately, he couldn't come, but he's uh, happy, uh, happily asked me to uh, try to find an opportunity to have a meeting with you, uh, either here in Ghana or in Russia. We know that you have been last time uh, to Moscow in 2007. And a lot has changed, I have to say, uh, because Moscow has gone through a massive preparation for uh, specifically World uh, Football Cup next year. So uh, when you come to Moscow, you will be quite surprised. Uh, St. Petersburg has also become quite a different city because it is now uh, the capital of Russian gas industry, uh, may become actually the capital of global gas industry. So we are more than happy to host you in St. Petersburg, and we brought to you a book with pictures of our uh, beautiful capital. Built in Tema. The fact of the matter is, Ghana, as we are stepping up our development, is going to require a lot more gas than we have from our domestic sources. If we are to do the bauxite project, agri agrochemicals and petrochemicals, and also ensure fuel security for power generation, then it is necessary that we get gas at the right price. Going out onto the contract market to source for LNG can be quite expensive. And we've been lucky to strike a deal with the world's largest gas supplier who have signed a very favorable agreement with uh, our national gas aggregator, GNPC, for the supply of additional gas for our power infrastructure and going forward other use, other non-power load uses of gas. This has the, the implication of, apart from securing fuel or gas to power our thermal industry, has the implication, because of the pricing, to begin to reduce the cost of producing power in our country, which is quite high, to bring us into the neighborhood of what is produced generally amongst our neighbors. The importance of reducing the cost of producing power is that it allows us then to charge a cheaper price for power to our citizens and also to industry so that they will become more competitive in the region, expand their production, and be able to offer more employment to our citizens. This is consistent with the vision of our president that employment, particularly youth employment, is a key factor to our growth and stability as a nation. So this is indeed a happy occasion for, for our citizens. Spasiba. I receive as President of the Republic, the first is what is aptly dubbed the new Ghana card, signaling the dawn of a new day in biometric identity management in Ghana. And the virtues of a public-private partnership arrangement in meeting our needs for development. Today's ceremony also constitutes a practical demonstration of the fulfillment of yet another promise of my party, the new Patriotic Party, made during the 2016 campaign that we would modernize and formalize the Ghanaian economy through the establishment of a credible national database 
and using the National Identification System, NIS, as the primary identifier, as prescribed by law. After several years of demonstrated inability to do so, the National Identification Authority, NIA, under the tenure of an MPP administration, is about to commence the registration and instant issuance of national identity cards to all Ghanaian citizens, both at home and abroad, as by law prescribed. My presence at today's event, together with the Vice President of the Republic, highlights the seriousness to which my government attaches the National Identification System Project. With my fullest endorsement, Vice President al Haji Dr. Mohamedou Baoumia, has ably spearheaded the technical and legal processes that has enabled the government to decide how to proceed with the goal of achieving a national EID system for Ghana, which is beyond needless controversy and polemics. The MPP government under my leadership has not only prioritized the NIS as both special and strategic, but also demonstrated commitment to making the NIA work again. That is why I've given to the NIA excellent executive and governing board leadership. And that is why I pledge to provide the NIA the requisite support to perform its functions effectively. Ladies and gentlemen, the historic inability of the NIA to complete the National Identification System, NIS, has resulted in the proliferation of biometric systems by other government agencies that are mandated by law to access information from the National Identity Register. Assigning the collection and custody of biometric traits to a single institution is safer and in line with current trends. By statute, the NIA is under obligation to ensure the accuracy, integrity, confidentiality, and security of data it collects. I am delighted to note that the new Ghana card is a great improvement over the previous one and meets all international standards required of such identity documents. For example, the National Identity Card has been enhanced to take advantage of new technologies such as tactile elements for the blind, chip embedding technology and iris capabilities in addition to taking all 10 for 10 fingerprints of an African. With a 128 kilobyte capacity, the Ghana card will enable other stakeholders to run their applications on the national identity card. Ultimately, the card will replace the sectorial identity cards in circulation and shall be the only card to be used in transactions where identification is required as provided by law. This registration exercise is also unique in the sense that it would involve the registration of ages zero to five. This is a historic opportunity for us to sanitize and rationalize birth certification in Ghana and ensure social inclusion right from birth. I wish to congratulate Identity Management Systems Limited, IMS, who are partnering with NIA to ensure the efficient rollout of the NIS project. It is noteworthy that one of the positive results of the NIA-IMS partnership 
is the funding of a public key infrastructure, PKI, which, being the, which would be in the custody of the National Information Technology Agency, NITA, to support the development of e-commerce in Ghana. As I've stated on many occasions, my government is fully committed to supporting and enhancing the capacity of Ghanaian companies and businesses to be the giants in their respective areas of operation. Let me remind the stakeholders in this exercise of the need to ensure the integrity, security, and confidentiality of identity data collected. It is important that the data collected is made av available only to persons or institutions authorized by law to access the data and used only for the purposes for which the data was collected. With a formidable governing board compromising a great mix of women and women and men of high integrity and professional repute, working together with a competent and committed chief executive officer and his staff. I have no doubt that the future of NIA is great and the future of Ghana's identity management system brighter. And I thank all the friends of Ghana who have assisted us to get this far. Thank you all very much for your time and audience. And may God bless us all in our homeland, Ghana, and make her great and strong.
Mr. President, thank you for giving me the opportunity to hold your card, the first Ghana card produced by the brilliant partnership of the National Identification Authority and uh, the Identity Management Systems of the Margins Group of Companies. We have circulated today a booklet called the Ghana Card. It is a booklet that contains information on this card. Specifically, at pages two and three of that booklet, you would find all the information you need to know about the versatility, durability, and comprehensiveness of this card. His Excellency the President is in great haste to develop this country, and he's also in great haste to leave this, these premises in order to attend to other important duties. Let me simply say that this card has all the internationally recognized and required features. The international organization, international civil aviation organization, ICAO standards. It has ISO certification and it is a passport. There is a passport on this card for travel within the, within the West African sub-region. When the e-gates of those um, other West African countries are available or open, you can literally travel through the sub-region with this card without requiring a paper passport. It is not to say that a paper passport is not necessary for other international travel, but it's just to demonstrate the enormous capacity that is on this card and the comprehensiveness which allows or will allow all other data silos to be connected and the validity of claims of other past, I mean other documents to be checked against the National Identification Authority database. I will not bore you with details. They are all in the booklet. And in the coming days, our very able public affairs or corporate affairs department will be reaching you in your communities and offices across this country and in your homes with details about this card and why every Ghanaian must register for the card. But I must say, by law, if you must prove your identity, it is only the Ghana card that you can use to prove identity. Within a year from now, when every Ghanaian in Ghana and every Ghanaian abroad has been given the opportunity to register for the Ghana card in the first instance for free, and you fail to do that, you would not be able to access certain services, facilities, and opportunities that are customarily available to the public. And so I urge all Ghanaians to take this ad great advantage and register for the new Ghana card, the one card that is your passport to social inclusion.